When you look out at the night sky, you're guaranteed to see one of a few things existing somewhere out in the universe. Maybe you're fortunate enough to feast your eyes on a full moon, or gaze upon the soft-spoken glow of Orion's arm, the belt of the Milky Way. Maybe the night is calm and you can lay down in the tall grass, watching for shooting stars, hand-picking constellations between the passing clouds. Maybe it's an evening right for planet spotting, and the rings of Saturn can be made out ever so slightly against the backdrop of the heavens. But what if you looked up one night and saw absolutely nothing? You'd probably gasp, rub your eyes to make sure you aren't dreaming, and wonder, how could there be nothing in a universe full of everything? With suns and planets and galaxies stretching billions of light years across space? Well, the answer is probably much simpler than the average person would expect. All across the observable universe are voids, vast increments of space between filaments containing little to no galaxies. One of the biggest of them all is the Boötes Void, one of the most fascinating corners of the universe that may withhold keys to unlock the answers to so many questions, such as why the universe looks the way it looks, and how it may be growing towards uncharted territory. It has grabbed the attention of scientists and researchers since its discovery in 1981, and as one of the many mysteries lurking in the darkest parts of space, the Great Nothing warrants a closer inspection. To answer the question, what is a void, one must first answer the question, what is a filament? The observable universe can be separated into two large-scale structures, filaments and voids. Filaments are walls of galaxy superclusters, bound together by gravity, and voids are the space between them where galaxies rarely reside. Filaments can be measured as large as 160 to 260 million light-years while voids can expand anywhere between 30 to 300 million light years. Voids are the less discussed parts of the universe, and for good reason. They don't really contain as much activity as their contrasting structures do, and their purpose isn't exactly known either. How voids came to be is a tricky question, and there is no definitive answer. A common explanation is that voids have been created throughout millennia as the gravitational pull of galaxies and superclusters attract other galaxies and superclusters to form filaments. The space where they once existed now is exactly what they are called, void of anything and everything. Think of the creation of voids like bubbles in a bath. You start out with thousands of little bubbles between the walls of soap, but eventually the bubbles form together to create bigger bubbles with more space inside. That's sort of the function of voids, Emptiness crashing together with additional emptiness. In a visual sense, the universe is like Swiss cheese, and voids are the holes, albeit larger ones. And unlike the holes on Swiss cheese, voids actually make up 80% of the observable universe, meaning there is more nothing out there than there is something. A somewhat harrowing thought, if not a fascinating one. All the more intriguing is the Boötes void, one of these pockets in space with an origin even murkier than its smaller brothers and sisters. Due to the sheer size of the Boötes void, the general theory of the creation of voids doesn't make sense as the two are related. The rate at which superclusters form filaments is too slow for Boötes to have reached the size it is now in terms of how old we believe the universe to be. In simpler terms, if our calculation is correct, Boötes void predates the Big Bang. How could that be? Scientists actually have an explanation for this. It is widely believed the universe does not expand at a fixed rate. So just because the rate at which voids are formed doesn't explain the size of Boötes' void, doesn't mean that has always been the rate of its own growth. In fact, all voids across the universe may have been affected by a part of space known as the dipole repeller, the centre of a void in the neighbourhood of the Milky Way galaxy that is known for its effective repulsion or the pushing of large-scale galaxies towards more dense areas of space, the opposite of an attractor. These gravitational movements are explained by the literal unfolding of space-time, attributed to a theoretical and unexplored matter of the universe. It's also believed Boötes' void is similar to the dipole repeller in that it also withholds this unknown property pushing superclusters away from its emptiness due to the unfolding of space-time. The only question remains, 
What exactly is this unobserved catalyst for such a galactic proposition? Dark energy has been circulating throughout the scientific community since the 1980s, when Alan Guth and Alexei Starobinsky came up with the concept when studying cosmic inflation, the very thing Boötes' void is said to be contributing to. It was always thought, since Einstein's theory of relativity was published, that there would have to be a new form of energy to explain the growth. The term was officially coined in 1998 by Michael Turner and has since become the explanation for the sole driving force of universal expansion as it relates to the accelerating growth of space. Dark energy has incredibly low density and makes up a whopping 68% of the total energy across the observable universe. This is derived from the fact that the total amount of matter in space makes up only 30% of the critical density, which is necessary for a flat or near-flat universe which ours is proposed to be without any indication of a greater global curvature. So something has to make up the remaining 70%, and dark energy is the safest bet. Thus, if Boötes' void is doing what many astronomers are hypothesizing, a good chunk of that 70% of dark energy exists within its borders. It's an exciting proposition too, because if dark energy is thought to be the catalyst for the gradual unfolding of space-time, could it also be the key to understanding the idea of space and time itself? This means Boötes' void could be a playground of opportunities to learn more about concepts such as the origins of the universe, the future of space, and even concepts of time manipulation and time travel. The most unfortunate part about the Boötes' void and the power of dark energy is its status as an unknown matter that will likely exist for the remainder of all humanity. While Boötes Void has been observed and mapped out via illustrations and computer models, the physical structure or image of dark energy has not been, and most likely will never be. It was attempted years ago in a laboratory setting, but the specific force of dark energy wasn't detected. Even worse is dark energy may very well be the driving force behind the eventual fate of the universe as we know it. If dark energy is a cosmological constant and continually pushes the universe into accelerated growth, the galaxies outside of the local group, of which the Milky Way is just about the centre of, will increase in line of sight velocity until it's faster than the speed of light. This means that galaxies outside of the local group will reach an event horizon, and due to the slow decrease of the Hubble parameter, they will eventually be undetectable. In fact, any light event beyond 16 billion light-years will be unobservable by us on Earth, and will be the first domino to fall for the scenario that any and all galaxies, or even superclusters beyond the local group, will contain light wavelengths too redshifted to be detectable at all, leaving the Milky Way and the other galaxies in our cluster to be the only ones in theoretical existence. At this point, however, the disappearance of most of the universe is a moot point, as the Milky Way would suffer from heat death, the point of maximum entropy. The universe would be unable to support thermodynamic free energy, and more specifically, Earth would become too cold to support life. It's important to remember that heat death was the theorised fate of the universe even before dark energy was seriously considered by the scientific community, however it could lead to a quicker heat death than originally predicted. It was once thought the universe would end at roughly the age of a Google years, However, dark energy may hint towards the more cyclical nature of the universe, which leaves scientists to predict each iteration of the universe at one trillion years old. It should also be noted that because dark energy is still such an unknown idea at large, it's possible the very nature and behaviour of the matter changes over time, such as dissipating over time, or taking a 180 degree turn and becoming attractive instead of repulsive. What really happens is any expert's best guess and the near-infinite endgames made potential by dark energy, and by extension, Boötes' void, is greater than the bits of knowledge we already do have. Contradicting the word void itself, Boötes' void is actually not quite as empty as the name implies. Other than supposed dark energy, Boötes secretly withholds around 60 detected galaxies, all located in a tube-shaped structure that runs throughout the entire void. If you compare this to populated filaments around the universe, 
using the estimate of one galaxy every 10 million light years. Boötes' void should contain over 2,000 galaxies, and that's a generous estimate considering 10 million light years is four times as far as the Andromeda galaxy is from the Milky Way. Because of the vast emptiness, those 60 galaxies inside of the void must feel like the only points of light in the entire universe. To give us perspective, astronomer Greg Aldering put it best. Imagine the Milky Way galaxy was the centre of Boötes' void. If the rest of space remained the same, we wouldn't have even known there were other galaxies that existed until the 1960s. That would be an incredibly lonely feeling, assuming for millennia you were the only solar system in existence, and the possibility of life in space was zero. So if there are a few galaxies hidden within the dark energy of Boötes Void, could any of them harbour life? One would think that the notion is impossible when you factor in the dark energy combined with the gravitational repulsion effect. That would not be a suitable environment for life, let alone an alien or human-like technology. But what if the lack of more galaxies, despite the few that do reside in the void, is the actual proof we need to say there is life away from Earth? In 1962, Russian astrophysicist Nikolai Kardashev developed a theory regarding the potential for advanced alien civilizations to be alive and well somewhere out in the greater universe. He did this by classifying civilizations based on their energy usage and its technological advancement, also called the Kardashev scale. Type 1 citizens were compared to modern day civilization on Earth. Type 2 citizens would theoretically be able to harness energy equal to the output of the energy of its own star and Type 3 citizens would theoretically be able to harness energy equal to the output of the energy of its own galaxy, meaning it could convert starlight from other galaxies into energy, as well as tapping into supermassive black holes for energy consumption. If a Type 3 civilization were to exist in the universe, Boötes' void would be the perfect hiding spot. They would be able to cloak themselves in the relatively forgotten area of space, disguised as a void and undetectable by other civilizations. It would explain why the size of Boötes doesn't fit within the theoretical growth of the universe, and why there are still a few galaxies remaining within the void. Maybe those galaxies are all that's left from what should be thousands, they're black holes and starlight harvested by a Type 3 civilization, and the 60 that are left are used as homeworlds. Of course, this involves a lot of conjecture and fantasy, but it should be noted, Nikolai Kardashev was a highly respected member of the scientific community and his scale is used by experts across the world. In the end, the galaxies, their planets, and the stars that surround them within Boötes Void are probably empty, either made of gas or dominated by black holes. But just because we can't observe what is there doesn't mean something more couldn't exist, making the hidden worlds of Boötes Void more fascinating than the structure itself. In the end, Boötes' void is more than just a massive, empty hole in the cosmos. It's also a colossal vacuum that sucks any and all particles through its vast territory. Scientists say the density is so low within the void that even specks of dust or space rock wouldn't ever touch each other, and even if they did, it might take eons. Its walls are hyper-attractive, and despite the dark energy pushing galaxies away from its centre, anything with mass could get sucked in never to return to the other side. On the same note, Boötes' void is also called the universe's greatest time capsule. It withholds unbelievably long state-preserving properties, meaning the matter that does enter the void could very easily come out of the other side perfectly intact, and the same it was hundreds of millions of years later. While it may only be possible with photons at the moment, what if it were possible to send something physical through Boötes and study the centre of such an unknown part of the universe? This is where science begins to hit the borderline of science fiction. Due to the subjective nature of dark energy and Boötes void, the possibilities are endless, even if they do range on the unbelievable. Some people wonder if Boötes void contains the answers we may seek as it relates to time travel or time manipulation. These theories stem from the fact that Boötes' entire existence contradicts the age of the universe, and could have grown at a rate incomprehensible to human calculation. What if the unfolding of space-time that's connected to dark energy has somehow allowed Boötes' void to exist before the Big Bang? Or what if the Type 3 civilizations mentioned previously harnessed enough energy to use Boötes' void 
as a time travel mechanism to go deeper into hiding. It's one of the more hauntingly beautiful aspects to the vastness of space, and the answers we may never find in Bootes could unlock truly awe-inspiring secrets about time as we know it. Ultimately, Boote's Void will continue to be studied as long as humans are around to do it. While we may never be able to observe its stark energy, or send photons to test its low density, or study the contents of its galaxies, we can still marvel at its gargantuan properties and infinite mystery. And by a miracle, maybe we can learn more about its connection to our existence, and the fate of the universe before the lights from the stars around it cease to exist and it pushes the superclusters out into oblivion and away from observation. So next time you do gaze at the night sky, remember that even though somewhere out there Boote's Void hosts a wide array of emptiness, it may contain more than nothing. Just like our existence here on Earth, compared to the universe, we may feel like nothing, but where there is nothing resides the most brilliant of possibilities, both here at home and out in the endless cosmos. Thanks for joining us here on Access Astronomy. We'll see you next time for another video.